Hi there. Um, I'm uh, Roger Emery from Southampton Solent. This is Sarah Cotton, Technology Enhanced Learning Developer. Um, so our background with um, assignments, um, we wanted to improve our online submission um, process um, following a number of years of using Turnitin as the primary and actually single method of online submission. Um, the challenges we had included providing um, is this actually working? There you go. Um, the challenge is providing an easy way of submitting media, e-portfolios, large files, enabling group submissions. We've got a bespoke. I'm whistling here. Like we've got a bespoke um, alphanumeric grading scale, which is quite awkward and not linear. Um, we have external examiners wanting access. We want to provide individual extensions to students with extenuating circumstances. Um, we wanted an electronic way to replace our old cover sheets we used to have, which was the old paper cover sheets that the students had to sign. Um, we wanted to reduce physical submissions, outages and unreliability, um, and students suppress um, stress and support calls. So we didn't want to do much, you know, we had a few things on our mind. So after using um, just the Turnitin plugin into Moodle as a singular thing, um, we came up with a solution which was using the Moodle assignment activity, along with the Turnitin plagiarism plugin, which is different to the V1 or V2 direct plugin. Um, we used the media, medial assignment tool, previously known as Helix, for media, video, and audio submissions. We used the Mahara plugin for ePortfolios. Um, and we also did some customization to the Moodle assignment activity itself um, to meet our needs, or we hope to meet our needs. Okay, so the presentation is going to outline our solution, highlight the issues which we uh, created with our new solution, um, and discuss some of the problems that have arisen since, and how we hope to develop it further. So I'll just talk about some of the issues. Um, as I said, we used Turnitin for over a decade, actually. Um, and we've had mandatory online text submissions since 2012, so quite a long time we've had mandatory online submissions. Um, but it was the primary mechanism for online submission, and we used um, Turnitin V1. At the time, this is going back quite a long time, Moodle didn't actually provide the advantages that Turnitin provided at the time, as particularly grade mark, which is a very good way of marking up, and Moodle didn't have any of those tools. Um, but people also wanted um, other tools. So the way to deal with individual late submissions, as I mentioned, we had a few issues with turning in downtimes. So we had no control over that, um, which we may have had um, with our own system. Um, the, the grade scale, as I mentioned, um, lecturers setting it up. So the method we have still is lecturers set up their own assignments. So you've got 700 people making mistakes. Um, and it was very easy for them to make lots of mistakes. We were trying to reduce that, um, but we couldn't really customize the Turnitin interface um, so much. Um, again, it still doesn't provide alphanumeric grading, only numeric uh, submissions. Um, but overall, um, and no direct access to the database, we don't have access to the data. Um, so overall, what started is a perfectly adequate solution, using just Turnitin V1 back 10 years ago, um, our requirements changed, changed quite a lot, and moved quite a long way. So we needed something to do something different. And in that time, Moodle has moved along as well. So now um, on to some of the opportunities we saw. So as Roger says, you know, um, the Moodle assignments now more mature, so we can kind of com combine the two plugins. Um, and now it meets the majority of our requirements, although not quite all of them. Thanks. <laughs> um, so ideally, you know, we want one tool for all submissions. It's much easier to report on that way. It's easier for students to identify where they need to upload their work if they're just always submitting to one tool rather than different ones, even though what's actually kind of um, built into it is slightly different uh, for each one. As Roger said, it supports alphanumeric grading, so we custom grade scales within the Moodle assignment tool. Um, and anonymous submissions, single point of upload, including all the, the late submissions, so it's really easy to identify the Moodle assignment uh, when someone's submitted late, um, which is really important for reporting, and we found that quite difficult. I think I spent about a week trying to write a um, 
SQL query to actually get out all of that information from Turnitin based on the tiny little bit of information you actually have in the Moodle database um, from that plugin. Um, so other opportunities that the assignment tool um, gives us is multiple file uploads, which just the, the V1 plugin on its own didn't do. Um, you've got the marking workflow, which you know, uh, tutors really like because they can mark how far through the, the marking process they are. Uh, individual extensions, allocated markers for the external um, verifiers, that's a really good tool. Um, and group submissions are better supported via the assignment tool, which turn it in on its own doesn't do 100%. Um, grade export and more data, which is probably one of the key things, actually. Um, so we've made that, well, I don't know if any, that's just the, um, the view of the gradebook with the Turnitin plagiarism plugin combined. You can see all the plagiarism scores there. Um, and that's just showing our, some of the things we use, like the, the workflow and um, groups and our alphanumeric grading scale. Um, and we've made quite a few customizations to the assignment tool so far. Um, our development uh, sort of workflow isn't very mature yet, but we're actually working on implementing version control. So at the moment, we've made really small changes to the assignment tool, trying not to kind of, you know, make much, um, many changes to the core code, which is, you know, complicates things when it comes to upgrading. Um, but we, what we have done is lots of string changes. They're really easy to implement. Just you know, contextual help right where tutors need it. Like you know, just reminding them to click the question mark icons for more help on things, and then actually embedding kind of more bespoke help within those pop-ups. Um, we added in a formative summative indicator into the assignment tool because we found that that was really important when. Um, providing reports to the assessment team because they go out and actually contact students if they haven't submitted just to try and you know provide that support um, and identify you know where people might need help in the absence of analytics which we don't have yet um, and just setting some of the defaults as well so when you set up an assignment it automatically um, gives you like the points to use as marking, but we didn't want that. We just want people to use our grading scale. So we changed the default to a scale. We also added a 40, me 40 megabyte option to the file size upload limit, which is what Turnitin actually accepts, um, the maximum Turnitin accepts. And um, so, sort of, you know, because that's the main, main type of assignment that is submitted. And we also noticed that the cutoff date is not included in the student summary. Um, so we added that in because that was quite an important date that the students needed to know about that they didn't, couldn't access from their interface. Uh, one of the other things was due to the string changes that we'd made, when you actually submit, the help's kind of underneath the button Whereas, you know, we thought it made more sense to actually have the instruction above the button so you read what you need to do and then make the action. Um, so there's some of the small changes that we made to the assignment tool ourselves. Uh, so rolling out the changes, obviously, you know, there was quite a lot of change there moving from one completely different system to something that they've probably used before but not a lot that's also had more changes made to it. So we presented um, a poster and presentation at our teaching and learning conference that's held every year. You know, we posted portal articles up for staff and students, lots of online help, including videos, um, and we put on lots of training sessions for staff on how to set up the assignments, and those are ongoing throughout the year. Um, at sort of key points because you know you, you go to a training session yeah great I get it do it forget it so every time there's you know assignments likely to be due in you know marking times we just put some more on to kind of reinforce that and we're just going to tell you about the actual experience yeah just a, a, a little bit more about the rollout um, and 
the sea of negativity I hinted at earlier. Um, where it didn't go quite so right, um, we only actually tested, and we did robust testing, but on scenarios of expected use. However, we still got people doing other interesting things that we didn't expect or they hadn't asked for. Um, and we were chasing our tails all the way through last autumn, trying to adjust the system to stop people making mistakes, rectifying the mistakes they'd made, um, and therefore we were updating the help and um, doing more user testing. So actually we ended up further developing the system while it was live and while people were using it. Um, so a bit of a lesson learned there on uh, the testing front, you know, just because you expect it to be used one way and you hope people would read the instructions, uh, the reality is they don't and they still manage to make some really spectacular mistakes. Um, an experience we had, I just wanted to check the time on that, um, one experience we had for instance was Electra had, you know, diligently set up their assignment got it all online, everything was perfect, but the lecturer that actually was handing out the assignment briefs told the students to hand in on paper. So our wonderful system to alert to lates and get the support people to contact the students then entirely broke because we had students incorrectly contacted. So you, you get things where the, the humans don't act the way you expect them always to do. Um, and sometimes the machine is easier. Um, so the, the experience, um, what we've effectively done there is switched our reliance from Turnitin, and we had been using by this point the V2 plugin, um, but just as the plagiarism plugin rather than the full thing, we switched our reliance from Turnitin to our in-house IT services. We were much more in control. And um, the way the plagiarism plugin works is on the cron job, on a scheduled task. So the students can upload their assignments. Doesn't matter what happens, as long as our servers stay up, if Turnitin's offline, doesn't matter, it will post those later to turn it in. The school will be delayed, but the lecturers can still view the work, mark the work, etc. Um, so we were better protected to outages from third-party systems, uh, more data held by the university. Reporting was much, much better because we had the data, we could do what we wanted with it. Um, as I said, uh, what Sarah mentioned, the targeted student achievement officer support was there. Um, we've got further opportunities now for grade export, and I feel the disaggregation and the modularization of the service um, provided us with much better opportunities than having all our eggs in one basket that didn't really quite fit our needs as, as we wanted. Um, some of the um, cons on the side of it, I think we've mentioned all the pros we were looking for. Um, so some, some of the downsides, um, student workflow. Um, the way Moodle works, you can, it still against this late submission thing or whatever, but you can upload a draft. Our regulation students to, um, you know, change a draft and put another one up because they want to upload their assignment, check their turn it in score, realise they've uploaded their shopping list, put up a second document, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, by meeting the needs of all of those exceptions in the workflow, and this is within the Moodle workflow, um, we actually made it harder for the majority who just went in once, uploaded once, and they were done. Um, so that's something we need to look at. Um, there's a confusion of options when setting up. So you saw the, the, the setup screen, people can still make mistakes. Um, when it goes wrong, it goes very, very wrong, unfortunately, still. Um, groups are still not quite supported in turn in, so there's still an issue there. We've got a mismatch between um, Moodle functionality and turn it in plagiarism, and I will mention those other other plugins we um, we used as well. So um, we increased the general Moodle file upload to 250 megs for other file types, although the default's 40 to match turn it in if people have got other files, project files. We used Medial. There was a presentation um, before about Cultura, much the same sort of way. Um, so we used Medial, previously known as Helix, for video submissions. That's 500 meg files at the moment with lots of help on how to compress. We're looking it up in the size of that. And we use Mahara for ePortfolios and the students have a gigabyte there. So those other third party plugins are all in the single Moodle assignment tool now as a selection button. And Sarah did some more work on that so that if you tick one box it grays out others and, and so on so you get the selections right. Um, but effectively we've kind of, as far as we can, protected ourselves from third party outages there. So what's coming next? Um, the future. Um, further disaggregation, I think, and we want to sort of make everything modular, then we can fix individual things as they break without taking down the whole assignment process. Um, the marking workflow, the marking grading sort of function in Moodle 3.2 looks fantastic, 
But UNOCONV is a bit of a problem. Um, I've heard a few people say we're not confident enough with that right away to use that. It needs a lot of sort of looking at technical side and the amount of server capacity for that. And the quick marks in Moodle, well, to be honest, not quite as good as grade markers in Turnitin at the moment. So we we'll need to see how that goes. Um, we need to review and update our student workflow, improve, improve the marking and grading workflow in general, um, and make it easy for the many. So we are looking at actually excluding some of our exceptions and coming up with something different for them because we want it to make it easy for the few, uh, for the many rather. And what we're looking at sort of further on this year is auto set of assignments. So taking the data straight, straight from our student record system, they will become summative assessments on the Moodle system. Lecturers can still set up formative assessments if they want to. Um, really interested in the My Feedback plugin that Jessica presented um, earlier, and also Feedback Studio that Turnitin's just sort of recently um, released. You know, so there's a lot of options in the future, but at the moment we haven't quite, quite right, I don't think. We thought we were going to, but um, that's the honest sort of truth. So, any questions? <laughs> That's your thing. There's someone over there. <laughs> I'm going to go and stand over here because I've got a microphone. Let's see people. Hi. Uh, you mentioned uh, using the Moodle workflow and, and finding that helpful. Uh, does it do everything you need or is there anything that doesn't quite fit? Um, it does everything we need at the moment. Um, we are looking at, um, uh, there's some things it doesn't do, sort of second markers, blind double marking, those areas. I know there's other plugins um, people have been developing for that area, so it doesn't quite do that. Um, but what we're looking at with assignments being automatically set off in Moodle based on student record system data is then getting the grades back into the student record system and the marking workflow is a key part of that so the lecturer can go to released or whatever status we decide to call it at the last and that will actually be the trigger to push stuff into the student record system as well and lock the submission so that people can't do any further marking or adjustment or editing to the comments so we've locked everything down so um, it does everything we want it to do at the moment, but I think certainly double marking those sort of areas is something we need. You know, it could be good to develop. Does that answer your question? I can't actually see the person. Any more questions? Stun. 